Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of um, Everyday Strong with Dr. Michael G. Daniels. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, Dr. Daniels, um, we got a good topic today, which is conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the weather's heating up outside and you know what happens when things when it gets hot outside. Mm -hmm. You know, people get a little angry, extra annoyed. And then all of a sudden. You have an argument that happens between two people, whether it be the friends, uh, uh, people that are married or just strangers, you know, driving down the street and somebody cuts somebody off. And then all of a sudden, you know, the guy flips the bird. But now you got the red light looking at each other. So, you know, mm-hmm. all this comes into play now on conflict resolution. And Pastor, I, I wanted to bring bring you in on this and say, OK, what should we do to resolve conflict in from the past mm-hmm. and in the present and how should we handle it in the right. future? And that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful question, a beautiful topic. And unfortunately, the Bible gives us an insight, you know, on how to deal with, with, with conflict. You know, one of the first things the Bible says is that uh, a soft answer turneth away wrath, which says that, you know, most times when we engage in conflict, a response is always to come at you the way you came at me, because our thought process oftentimes is I have to be offensive to be defensive, you know, kind mm-hmm. of approach. And so the, the Bible says you use a soft answer. Now, I can defend myself with a soft answer just as easy as I can with a harsh answer. And so if I'm going to not necessarily avoid the conflict, but avoid the consequences of the conflict. They have to, first of all, recognize that, you know, the way I respond back to you is going to be critical. Um, Then the other thing the Bible says is that let's say I'm the one that has the problem. I have the problem with you. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible says how I approach you is important. So it says my first step ought to be to go to you with the problem, gently explain the problem and how the problem affects me, not what you did but how it affects me and not to blame you, not to tell you how wrong you were, but how the problem affects me. And let's say that you don't hear me. And, and oftentimes you may not because you mm-hmm. may be in a defensive mode. Right. Then the Bible says, I say, take someone else who doesn't have a, a, a bone to pick in, you know, in the process. Mm-hmm. And that person should then, you know, be kind of like the mediator per se. If that doesn't work, then the scripture says, well, you take them to the church. In other words, you take them to individuals, you know, that everyone believes and trusts that that will allow the Lord to lead them. So that's how the Bible looks at it. Uh, The the other thing I guess we have to consider is this. this, The most simplest way to avoid a conflict is to forgive. Now, that's the hardest thing to do. But the simplest thing is just to forgive. I think one of the issues we have to come to to grips with is why do we have conflict? To me, that's central. Why do we have conflict? And oftentimes we as individuals never stop to think why we have conflict. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. Why do people argue? Why? It's because they're always debating an opinion. Mm-hmm. Everyone has an opinion. And that's where conflict really truly arises from. Few people ever debate facts because facts are, are concrete and therefore there's nothing for us to argue about, okay? For example, we don't argue about, and I, I, I use this when I'm talking to married couples all the time, the same analogy. We don't argue about what the temperature is. We argue about whether I'm hot or cold. Mm-hmm. So I may say I'm hot, you may say, well, I'm cold. I'm hot, cold, hot, cold, we're debating. So we are arguing about that. You know, you just don't care about me. You don't care about my feelings. If you cared about my feelings, you would go ahead and adjust the thermostat. See, we're arguing about how we feel, right. not about the fact. So if we were to just simply state, well, you know what? The temperature is 74 degrees. Mm-hmm. How do we solve it? We look and see the thermostat says 74. See, we're no longer arguing then. So what we do at that point then is we start looking for a solution because now we both know that. Right. There's no need to argue about whether it's hot or cold. Now we're dealing with what the solution is. And so really, that's the way to avoid conflict is to refocus and not deal with how I feel. But but once I you know let you know how it affects me, now let's look at the facts and let's discuss the facts. 
and how we can resolve it so the feelings are not impacted as much. Right. Now, I know for dealing with or resolving a conflict that happened years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand something like this could take, you know, it could take years of counseling to go through for the person to realize what they need to do in order to heal. Mm -hmm. So this is maybe a, this is a general statement for this, but how could we, how could two people that have a conflict that's, that happened years ago where you clearly see that they're still friends or they're still married or they're still doing something and, and it's still cool, mm -hmm. but every once in a while that one conflict comes up because it was never resolved. How would they, what is your suggestions on how to get that resolved? Well, and, and what you said was, I guess, a, a huge problem in that, as you said, we have a tendency because we are arguing, arguing or debating, as I should say, about our feelings, we don't resolve the conflict, okay? Because we have never dealt with the facts of the conflict. The other thing that we, we spend too much time in is, is trying to prove to the person how right we are. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really the focus of it. I'm right, you're wrong, and you know, vice versa. Well, if, if, if it's, anytime I'm arguing based on my feelings, I'm always right. Mm -hmm. Because my feelings are always right. Right. But so are your feelings because right. that's how you feel. So both of us are right. That's why both of us are arguing. And neither one of us stops to think, wait a minute. You know what? We're arguing feelings and not fact. Mm -hmm. And so since we're arguing feelings, we both are right. So, you know, based, you know, put in perspective. So what we need to do then is to stop arguing the feelings. Someone has to say, well, wait a minute. You know what? We can't just agree to let it go because that's what people will say sometimes. Well, let's just agree to disagree and move on. No, when you agree to disagree and move on, you have not resolved the problem. Right. And it will still be festering in you. And when something similar to that comes up again, all those old emotions will come right back up. So you don't agree to disagree. What you need to agree is to a resolution of the problem. So what you do is you look for a solution and not to prove the person right or wrong. And that's the key. And oftentimes that's a hard thing to do because when a person is vehemently trying to tell you that they are right, mm -hmm. they don't really want to hear the solution. Right. What they want to hear is you say they are right. Right. You know, and so that's when the Bible says a soft answer turns the way wrath is that now it's up to me who trying to find resolution to give you an answer that allows you to be comfortable that you are right without you thinking that I'm necessarily wrong. Mm -hmm. And so once we can get that out of the way, then we can look for a solution. Not that we just agree to disagree, but let's agree to how to handle it the next time it comes up. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can move past it. How do we handle it in the future? Because if I'm still concerned about it, that's my biggest problem. Two things. One is that in the past, you, it, it caused me pain. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it might come up again. It's going to cause me more pain. So I want to make sure that the person understands that, number one, I acknowledge your pain, mm -hmm. you know, and if it comes up again, this is how we're going to handle it. So you won't be in pain again. Right. It, acknowledging it is a, is a big, is huge. And, um, you know, I just remember like going like with work and dealing with people who have, you know, um, confrontations at work, you know, people arguing over certain things and having to sit down with them. And it's so hard to get people to like, you make it one person that's ready to resolve the conflict and ready to listen. And the other person is just over there, just irate and just, they just want to hear themselves talk. And I normally just cut the conversation off right then and said, we'll just revisit this because you're not willing to listen right now sure. you're still very upset where you know and then to get both people on the same playing field it is it's difficult to do that but once you do you get people you get to some type of uh uh solution and then now for me as a business owner a lot of times a solution rides with me resides in you know with my decisions mm -hmm. and I hear other stuff that oh this is the reason why they're fussing because this particular process isn't refined yet right so then you know that bring both people together and refine the process and then all of a sudden everybody's great well I can tell you here's, here's a simple way to get people to, to get off of themselves what would you like me to do 
Yeah. See that change that changes everything now. Because if, when I'm when I'm arguing with you and I'm telling you how bad it made me feel, how this and that and this and that, and all these kind of things, and, and I can listen to you intently, mm-hmm. but I can never really help you understand that I understand how you feel. I don't care what I say. You know, it, it's like a, a death in the family. How can I convince you that I know how you feel? You can't. I, I can't. Right. Right. And so so the person keeps trying to tell you. They keep trying to tell you because even if when you say I, I understand, I'm you know I understand, they'll say no, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. Because if you understood, then see they keep throwing at you. So one of the ways that you can get them to to get off of that is to say, okay, I I, I think I get it, mm-hmm. but you're right. I will never understand how you truly feel. That's impossible. But what I can do is I can do something that makes you feel better. So tell me what you want me to do. Right. To change. Tell you what you want me to do to correct what I have done. Because I can't change the past, but I can make sure that I don't do something that will affect our present and our future. And, and, and see, once someone comes with that, that's that soft answer. That's saying right. what? You know what? What do you want me to do? Right. If it's, if it's within my power, I'll do it. Now, you can't. if you tell me to drop dead... Then okay, I'm not gonna drop dead. Right. <laughs> but if you give me something reasonable to do, then I'm gonna try to do it. And most people, once you do that, it calms them right down. Yeah. Because for most people, they don't have a clue what they want you to do. Right. It reminds me of this um sales training that I was listening to, and the guy was like, Whenever you're whatever product you're selling, and if you're selling to a person, they have an objection on the product. Mm-hmm. Don't fight the objection. Agree with them. And it neutralizes it instantly. Absolutely. And because at that point, now you're both in agreement about the product. And then you move on to what what can you, what do they want the product to do? Right. And then, it, then like you said, they get stumped because now they're so... You, we've all... Most people have been to timeshare meetings, mm-hmm. right? And you go in the door with the mindset, I was just wanted my free trip. I'm going to say no. Mm-hmm. But there's always that you know, that weak link that's in there that says, you know, this ain't a bad idea, bad deal. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, see, that's why they always want the, the, the husband and, and the wife right. to be there because right. the two people. They think they can get you. They, they think they can, and that, you know, me and Sherry would go in there, we'd be like, we'll be like stone faced. No, mm-hmm. thank you. No, thank mm-hmm. you. No, thank you. But it does, it, I can see it working in sales. And if it works in sales, you best believe it works in conflict resolution. Well, it it, it, it does. I mean, it, it works. It, it work. It works with relationships. And you think about sales. It is a relationship, right? It is two people trying to get a relationship to come to the same conclusion, right? And and that's what con- a conflict by definition says. What we don't agree. And the same thing when you go and someone's trying to sell you something, we don't agree. Mm-hmm. We don't agree maybe on the product. We don't agree maybe on the price. Right. We don't agree on the quality. We don't agree. So the same concepts apply to a relationship that we just don't agree. And so it, it's not about saying, well, okay, let's agree to be disagreeable. Let's, you know, let's agree to disagree with that right. was agreeable. It's about finding that common ground. And so again, you know, I give you a, a good example, you know, when I was, you know, um, while back um, when a friend of when I was going to school and a friend of mine, you know, used to ride to school with me. Well, anyway, on this one particular day, um, I was leaving and I left a little earlier than I normally left. And so uh, as I'm pulling out of the parking lot, he was running to try to get to me. Now, I didn't see him because I had someone in the car with me and I'm talking to them. So he's running to try to get get to me. And so, you know, when I get to the corner, the light turns just at that time. And so I take on off. Well, that brought up a conflict because in his mind, he saw he, he, you thought, saw it. <laughs> he thought I saw him and that I paused long enough for him to get close and then pulled off. Right. So he thought I was playing a game with him. I wasn't. I'm waiting for the light to change. Right. When it changed, I just pulled off. So that was a conflict. And so there's nothing I could say to convince him that right. I didn't see him. Right. You know, his mind was set. You did see me. You mm-hmm. did. You you couldn't have not heard me because I was yelling to the top of my lungs. I'm like, I didn't hear you. My music was playing. The windows are rolled up. Anyway, I couldn't convince him. Now, I moved, you know, away. 
I come back about five years later and he's still upset. Come on. <laughs> the conflict is still there, right? So we're at another friend of ours house, you know, and I say to him, what do you want me to do? Right. And he paused and said, I don't know. And I said, well, if you don't know, it's hard for me to help us because right. I don't know what you want from me. And then he said, I guess nothing. We're too old for this, aren't we? I said, of course we are. You know, and we moved on. Right. But see, the, the, the issue was that, I mean, was his feelings valid? Yeah, because he felt them. Right. But that don't mean that was what was in my mind or right. in my heart. Right. You know, and I think that's the other thing that causes conflict. And that's why I say we have to get to what causes the conflict. A lot of times what causes conflict is we want to judge the person's intent mm-hmm. and not the person's actions. And if you can separate intent from actions, we wouldn't have much conflict, but that's not what we do. See, you walk in the door and close the door. And my, 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 my thinking is your intent was to close the door in my face. Right. And really, you were just trying to keep, you know, from bugs from coming in or right. what have you. Or you just didn't see them, you know, behind you. So you just close the door. Here's how we are as human beings. We want you to judge us by our past experience with you. Right. But we want to judge you by what we think you might be trying to do. Right. You know, so we're judging your intent, but we'll tell you to judge us by our actions. We'll say something like, well, that ain't what I did. And, you know, so we want you to judge us by our actions, but we want to judge you by your intent. Right. And that's the wrong thing to do. If you judge a person by their actions, it minimizes the conflict because now we're not debating what I think you meant. Right. We're only talking about what you did. And that, again, forces us to get back to the facts and right. not to the feelings. Right. And, and then it, it, it also takes the ego out of it, too. Absolutely. When you're dealing with just with, with the facts. And, and another conflict resolution I did with people at, at uh, the business zone. And I remember they was going back and forth and, it, and I was on the speakerphone. And we had just got through doing a podcast about the devil, mm-hmm. about how he's always around and stuff. And it just hit me. I, I said, both of y'all, I said, be quiet. I said, the devil has entered the room. It's mm-hmm. time to end the conversation. Mm-hmm. I, and then that was it. Mm-hmm. And what's funny, my wife said, yes, you know what? You was, that was just so black of you being on the phone saying <laughs> that was a <laughs> <laughs> I said, but it was the truth. Because right. they neither 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 person was listening to the other person. Right. It was the egos talking. And like, this is the devil just saying, I'm just going to keep this stirred up. Mm-hmm. It's like, and the only way to stop him is right. to stop. Right. And once you stop feeding into it, it just immediately just, just cut right off. Mm-hmm. And I, this uh, guy named Mimazai Abbott, and you've met him. Mm-hmm. He's told me year. He told me years ago. He said, "CB, deal with the facts." Mm-hmm. And he told me that. Yeah, I was in mid twenties when he told me that, and I was like, you know, now because the majority of people work with me are women, mm-hmm. and you get all this. Women give way more information than men do when they communicate. Mm-hmm. That's just. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a general statement. It's not always mm-hmm. like that way, mm-hmm. but generally they do. Verbal. I'll say they give more verbal. Verbal. Right. Verbal information. Yeah. So, but when you get most of the time when you give them more verbal information, a lot of it isn't really facts. The facts is in there, mm-hmm. but I got to sift through all of that to get to the mm-hmm. facts. You got to sift right. through people's feelings, like we just got through talking about and how they felt about it. Mm-hmm. Like, but what actually happened? Mm-hmm. And then when you get to that, it made once I understood what Amazon was telling me, it made my life so much easier as a business owner, as a manager, as a business, you know, and just an everyday life. Because now I just, you know, what is the facts? Mm-hmm. You know, did the person, then what did the person holding the door, did he see me coming? Mm-hmm. No. And I analyzed, like, he didn't look back. He didn't know I was there. Door closed. So I'm not going to be upset. Now, with the funny but thing about even it, if he did know you there, a, even if he did know you there, that doesn't mean his intention was to do you harm. Right. Because he true. could, could have been in a hurry, right? And had to get out real fast. Right. For whatever reason. And, you know, so, and, and you raise a good, interesting point. And, you know, when you talked about the w- women communicate with men communicate, right? Because that is a good point. And that's something I think that men have to keep in the back of their minds, and ladies too. 
is that women do provide more information, but they do it for a reason because women are more in tune to what they feel like when they're talking to you. So they're trying to feed you their feelings. And so what we have to be careful of as men is when a woman is feeding us their feelings is to give them ample opportunity to feed their feelings out there and then to acknowledge that we recognize their feelings before we move to the facts too fast. I'm just saying, I know it's not what you were saying, but right. you know, just for our listening audience, because I don't right. want the men to just jump through it and not, you know, deal right. with the feeling and just go, right. oh, baby, right. well, just give me the facts and just the facts, ma'am. But, right. you know, <laughs> but you got to because a person's perception is their reality. It, it, it really is. So I have to get their feelings out and give them an opportunity and acknowledge their feelings. But then just acknowledge with them that with, you know, somehow, but in a gentle way, as you as you pointed out earlier, is that I, I, I hear what you're saying. But I can never truly understand how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. I, I just cannot because I'm not there and I'm not you. And because your feelings are not just based on the incident. That's the other th key thing that we need to remember. A person's feelings are based on their past. You feel the way mm -hmm. you feel about something right. based on your past, not right. about based on your present. If someone has hurt you in your past, you pull that with you to the present time and say mm -hmm. your intentions was to hurt me. Right. If you've never been hurt in your past, you don't view it that way. Especially it, it, it's hard to do that when it's the same person you're talking to. But also you also when you're talking with other people, you don't know what happened to them in the past by somebody completely well, different. That's what, I, that's what right. I'm saying. See, So you have to re recognize that, right? right? That that their feelings are not just based on this incident, but it's also based on, you know, the the those those external factors that you may not even be aware of. And so that's why I'm saying that, you know, we can let people know that I, 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 you're right. If someone says you just don't understand, you're right. I really don't understand. I, I don't. Right. And, and and I may not ever be able to understand. But what I can do is I can do what you need me to do. Right. So that we can solve the problem. And that that acknowledges right there that what I got it. But you know what? I, 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 I've, I've given you the, the appreciation that I believe that what you're saying is true. Because when you said to me, you don't understand. I gently said to you, you're absolutely right. I can never understand what you went through. Right. Because I'm not you. Right. I can understand what they did. See, but I can't understand what you went through because right. they did it. Yeah. And that's true for every human being. So once we can get that out of the way, and, that, and that's most people want you to understand what they go through, but they don't want to understand what you go through. Mm -hmm. All they want to say to see from you is what happened to you. And not what you went through. But once we can get that out of the way, then we can now, again, get back to, you know, you're right. But, you know, that what they did was my understanding from what you tell me that, that, you know, I closed the door in your face. Right. I did close the door. Next time, even if I am in a hurry, it won't happen again. Right. I'll, I'll hold the door. You know, I, I, <laughs> I left the doctor's office this morning before I came here. I was at, at, at the doctor's office. And um, there was a gentleman that was on crutches. Uh, coming out and and he had his um, both his legs were amputated knee down. There were three ladies coming behind them, one holding the baby, and so the door has a uh, handicap, you know, button right that you push handicap button. But I I opened the door with the handicap button, but I stood there and held the door. When the last lady came through, she looked at me and she said, "Thank you for being a gentleman. There are very few of you left these days." Mm -hmm. And she and she walked on through. Now, the first three that came through didn't say mm -hmm. anything. OK, but I get what the lady that, that said something to me was an elderly white lady. She was probably, I would think, around maybe 70 years old. OK. See, the other three in their minds were looking at it like this is what he's supposed to do because their generation was different. Mm -hmm. So their expectation was different. Her coming from a from a baby boomer or pre baby boomer pre baby boomer generation, her thing was she came from a place where, generally speaking, in her mindset, the races were not as cohesive. So therefore, black men were just walked away. Mm -hmm. So her so her perception of the whole thing was totally different than their perception. So her feelings about it were totally different. Where she felt, you know, a sense of um, gratitude. Right. They didn't. <laughs> Right. You, you know, I, I'm just saying it to say that 
the same act was done for all four people. Right. But her feelings were different from theirs. Or they may not have been, but she's the only one that expressed it. Right. Right. So I'm saying if that can be the case for a good deed, it can also be the case for a bad deed. Right. That similarly, I could have done something bad, like not held the door. Right. And the four of them could have had different perceptions based on that and, and, and could have caused a conflict because the next time a brother was there and if he did something, <laughs> they might would have said, you know what, see how you all are? Right. Da, 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 you know, that kind of thing. You know. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that has helped me as I've matured and I try to get other people to understand. You cannot take what happened to you in the past what right. other situation and mm-hmm. bring it to the present when you're dealing with with people, right? You know, I, I, this guy, um, this guy I know who sells cars. He said, "When I meet a new person, I'm always dealing with the the person that sold them the car the last time, mm-hmm. whether they was good or whether they was bad. He's always worrying about that experience because people bring that baggage with them. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay. When he said that, I said, I, you know, I get, I get it. I understand what you're saying. So now, like when I go some places. Like even if I go to a restaurant that didn't get good service the first time I was there, mm-hmm. I go into the door with the mindset this is a new experience. Mm-hmm. I could get a different waiter, a different waitress. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be a different manager on duty. It could be completely different. Right. I've had situations where I went to restaurants for years, got great service, and went three times in a row and got horrible service, and then it was like, what happened? Mm-hmm. You know, being in a conversation, something must have went on with the manager. You know, something ain't right. But you, uh, it's not you don't. And then the other thing is you don't take it personal. Right. I think some people. Like when that door slams and, and you look at it and you say, oh, look at that redneck or mm-hmm. you, you call, you start calling. It's like, but why? Right. You know, it's like even even if he literally just left the clan meeting right. and did not hold the door for you. Right. Is that are you dead? No. Right. And, and, it's like, why are you taking it personal? And you don't know his intent. Yeah. The fact that he left the clan meeting don't mean he was trying to harm you when he closed the door. Right, and it just doesn't. Now, it, he may was, but you don't know that. Right. But but again, and and that's that's the thing. So so you know, like, it's like your original question. So conflict resolution has two sides to the same coin. One is when I'm the receiver. One is when I'm the giver. Right. And sometimes both of us think we are the receiver. You know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like you know, like like, like in couples, for example. Most couples that have conflict is because both of them think they are the recipient, you know, of right. something that was bad. Right. You know. And so then how do we resolve that conflict when both of us think we are the recipient? But it goes to just what you just said. It's because both of us are making assumptions based on why you did it, you know, and both mm-hmm. of us are thinking about how it impacted us and not saying, well, what's the long term? You, know, you know, what, what did you really mean by it? And, right. and, and those kind of things. And so how do we resolve that when it's because usually that's what's old. That's when you get that old conflict, you know, when it's couples involved. And and oftentimes what that's based upon is now it happened, let's say, 10 years ago. But now everything that happens subsequent to that, my mind is on that 10 year ago incident. And that colors how I think about everything else that you have done because of that one thing back there that we never resolved, which I really may not have intended to hurt you with. Right. Or you may have gotten hurt by it. That's the other thing. You may have actually gotten hurt by it. But because you got hurt don't mean I was trying to hurt you. Right. It just means you got hurt. Right. And that's the other thing I think that people have to come to grips with is that when you know if you really want to resolve conflict, and, and let me say this too, everybody doesn't want to resolve conflict. Mm-hmm. There are a whole lot of folk that live for conflict. And, and, and that's right. what keeps them energized. You, you, know, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, a good friend of mine used to always say, fight hard and love hard. Right. You know, and then <laughs> fight them and then make mad passionate love to them. You know, uh, I think it's a fallacy, but that's what he would always say. Right. But so, so you have to also figure out, do we really want to resolve the conflict or do we want to be right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think that's key too. Right. Because if you don't really want to resolve the conflict, if if your only goal is to be right, then the conflict will never be resolved. Because even if I acknowledge that you are right, right. I think you are wrong. Yeah. I only said you were right, so we would stop arguing. So now, ten years from now, I'm still upset. Still and upset. if it come up again, boom, we right back in it. 
So that I think that's another key point we have to think about is that are we trying to resolve it or are we trying to prove ourselves right? Are we looking for a solution or are we looking for our day in court? Right. Well, that's all our time for this particular episode. Thank you, uh, Dr. Daniels.